Beyond the towering Himalayan peaks in the far north of India, this is Ladakh, the land of mountain passes. Mountain passes and majestic glaciers. Glaciers that feed some of Asia's largest rivers, the biggest source of fresh water for millions of people. Little wonder that songs of glaciers and rivers have echoed here for centuries. But the glaciers are retreating by some 50 feet every year. Climate change has hit Ladakh. I'm here to meet an extraordinary individual, Chebang Norfolk, known to his friends as the Iceman. It's November, and he and his colleagues are hard at work, diverting the stream towards the shady side of the mountain. Over the years, Norfolk's seen the winters getting shorter. There's less snowfall, and what little snow there is melts away rapidly, leaving the region long before it can be put to use in the sowing season. Nofu has been trying to change that. The channels he builds are guiding the runoff water to where it can slow down and freeze. At each dip in the terrain, he's built retaining walls to slow the water further. The water freezes in steps into an artificial glacier, building up all along the slope. Little wonder he's called the Iceman. In 10 years, he's created no less than five artificial glaciers that will melt in summer and supply water to the five villages of his region. December. Ladakh lights up for Losar, the Buddhist New Year festival, a time to propitiate the gods and pray for water to irrigate the fields and increase the crops. The people come together for a little warmth in a harsh life. As the nine-day festival progresses, I see worship taking many forms. A group of villagers plunges fearlessly into the freezing cold waters of a local stream. Yet another effort to please the gods. Meanwhile, Nofil's colleague Nazir revisits the site. Sadly, the rocks are still visible, though they should have been covered with ice by now. It just corroborates what the records have been showing. 
In January 2002, the average minimum temperature was minus 15.4 degrees Celsius. In January 2003, it rose to minus 12.2. 2004, it rose further to minus 10.4 degrees Celsius. Ladakh has been getting warmer. Changla, 17,300 feet. The third highest motorable pass in the world. At these extreme heights where few men venture, Norfolk's creating yet another of his artificial glaciers. This one, a thousand feet long. Norfolk's big idea came from a small observation. Water rushing out of a pipe in the lane near his house. He'd seen it every day for years. At the center of the torrent, the water rushed out and flowed on. But at its sides, it slowed down and froze. Down the line, more slowing down, more freezing. The water was freezing in stages as it lost momentum. This was what inspired Norfolk to make his artificial glaciers. But the problem's far bigger. Glaciers all over the region are under threat and it's getting worse. Conservative estimates suggest that if current climate change trends continue, temperatures will increase by about one degree Celsius by the year 2050. And these majestic glaciers could shrink to less than a fifth of their current size. This from just a one degree increase in temperature. Although it might seem to a casual onlooker that 0.6 or one degree Celsius is a, is a very small change, in global terms, it's a very large change. It's very difficult to change the planetary temperature of the Earth. Uh, for example, the average temperature of the Earth uh, at the maximum of the last glacial period, 18,000 years ago, was only about five degrees Celsius colder than now. But that was a time when um, London, when uh, Stockholm, when Oslo were covered by ice, uh, more than a kilometer thick, when most of Eurasia and North America were covered by ice. Um, and so it's very important not to suppose that a small change in the North hemispheric temperature doesn't mean very much, it means a lot. So 0.6 of a degree Celsius and one degree Celsius since in the last hundred years is a big change. Mighty rivers like the Indus and the Ganga will no longer be perennial. These rivers draw 80% of their water from glaciers during the dry season. Imagine those glaciers reduced to less than a fifth of their current size. The signs of climate change are visible all over the region and they're disturbing to say the least. Migratory birds like these ruddy shell duck used to leave Ladakh long before the harsh winter of this cold desert. Now, some of them have become residents. This may not sound disturbing, but it's one of the first indications of a major ecological imbalance. Two thousand and six, a human crisis unfolds on the banks of the Zanskar River, adding a new dimension to an already grave problem. Eighty-year-old Funstong Dorji and his fellow villagers are stranded. They used to walk on the frozen river as late as March to their homes upstream at Lingshan on a thick, continuous sheet of ice. This year. The entire ice sheet was gone by February. Now they'll have to wait three months before they can return by the route through the mountain passes. Meanwhile, Norfolk's glaciers have grown to impressive proportions. The slopes I'd seen in December are covered with ice. It'll only melt in mid-April when these terraced fields below need water for the sowing season. <laughs> 